the shapes of molecules, determine their reactivity. And more specifically, it's the internal distances, or the distances between atoms in a molecule, that determine its reactivity. What you should notice in A and B is that the hydroxyl groups in A are much closer together, at least in this conformation, than they are in B, where one is going away and one is coming towards you, the viewer. This difference in internal distance between the two oxygens has a distinct effect, an observable effect, on chemical reactivity. Because these two molecules differ in their internal distances, and because they're not superimposable on one another, we call them diastereomers. This is one kind of stereoisomer, but diastereomers are non-superimposable and not mere images. They possess different internal distances, and that's the hallmark of diastereomers, is that a distance between two key atoms in the structures is different. And as you might expect, these two diastereomers would exhibit different chemical reactivity. An interesting example of diastereomerism that doesn't revolve around three-dimensional tetrahedral carbons are compounds containing double bonds. So let's start with the parent alkene ethylene, which is drawn for you here, and add one substituent to it. There's only one possible way to do this, any of the four positions are equivalent, and this leads to propene. Now let's add a second methyl substituent. What you should notice is that there are two possible ways to do this. We can add a methyl group to the top H, we can add a methyl group to the bottom H, and the internal distances in these two molecules are different. The two methyl groups are much closer in C, much farther away in D. And so these two compounds are different, and most importantly for our purposes, they are diastereomers of one another. In fact, this is such a common example that chemists have given these special names. C is called the cis compound. Cis because the two methyl groups, or the two hydrogens, depending on how you look at it, are on the same side of the double bond. D is called the trans compound because the methyl groups are now across the double bond from each other, and same with the hydrogens. When two non-superimposable molecules are mere images of each other, something special happens and they possess a unique relationship. They're called enantiomers. So if we return to the stereoisomerism flowchart you see here, we're now down to this question of are the molecules mere images of one another? If they are not mere images, then we have the case that we've seen already, diastereomers. This occurs for alkenes and in tetrahedral compounds that have multiple stereocenters. If the molecules are mere images of one another, however, then they're called enantiomers, and enantiomers have some special properties that diastereomers don't have. One special property of enantiomers is that they have identical internal distances, but they're still not superimposable. Consider the two molecules that you see here, E and F. The internal distances in molecules determine their reactivity, so it would be interesting if these two molecules had identical internal distances. In fact, the distances in E and F are exactly the same, and these two images show you those distances, and the proof is in the pudding so to speak. So the numbers are exactly the same. 2 2.41, 2.41, 2.05, 2.05, 3.03, 3.03, 2.46, 2.46. And in fact, if you measured other internal distances in both of these molecules, you would get identical numbers. Hopefully I've convinced you that the internal distances are exactly the same, thus the chemical reactivity energy and chemical properties of E and F, we would expect to be essentially identical.